Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Insurance Journals Academy of Insurance's weekly webinar after show. I'm your host, George, and joining me for the after show today is the director of the Academy of Insurance, Patrick Rate, and today's instructor. Today's class was PFAS or PFAS mm -hmm. and a PFAS. Okay. PFAS, what's the big deal? And our instructor for today is uh, Dr. Brenda Wells Dieter. Brenda, welcome to the after show. Great to have you here. It's It seems like a long, long time since we've had you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you, George, and thank you for having me, Patrick. I, I always love to be here with you guys. And um, yeah, but it, it has been a while. So uh, thank sure. you for letting me come back. I love reading your bio at the beginning of the classes because it's so extensive. I mean, we've got you have a uh, like a salad bar, a boulia bays of expertises <laughs> and, um, you know, like marijuana legalization, cyber liability, uh, risk management, all kinds of things. Um, so PFAS, I guess that would fall under risk management. But but um, one of my questions is why? PFAS, is it something you're interested in or is it just something that you're seeing more and more in uh, insurance? And um, the title of the course, PFAS, what's the big deal? Are there people saying it's not a big deal? Is there a question about that or should it be called PFAS, the big deal behind, you know, something like that? I'm just wondering what your thoughts uh, are and go. I, um, I have a client that I do continuing ed for every year. And I always look for the new, the, the hot topic. Now PFAS is not new, uh, but it is a lot of people don't know about it. Um, so, you know, I said, look, we, we probably need to talk about this. And I decided to put together, a, you know, a 45 minute ish class on it. And, um, uh, you guys were interested in it. So this is the first time it's been aired or shown. Um, wow. But my, my husband uh, worked in construction for many years as a project manager. And he's aware, you know, that it, it's it's very well known in construction what you're that you're supposed to avoid those things. Uh, especially if you're building a green building. Um, but I I started reading on it and I got really fascinated by it. Um, I, I sure. was really trying to understand the chemistry of it. Uh, but again, as we established in the class, it, me and chemistry, that's why I'm in insurance because, you know, I'm, I, I know that I, I don't know much about chemistry. Um, I just know that they froze Han Solo in carbonite. And these are carbon bonds. So you you take what you want to from that. Well, I was driving my daughter to school today and absolutely Mindy on Kids Place Live had that as a trivia question. What was Han Solo frozen in? Which is incidental to our conversation, I guess. But and, Yeah, and I, I was just thinking about it. I was like, oh, carbon, carbon bonds, carbonite, Han Solo. So I thought I just thought I'd throw that in there. Plus it's Star Wars Day. And, and it's it Star is, Wars Day. It's Star right. Wars right. Day. May the fourth. May the fourth be with you. <laughs> exactly. So it's not that people don't think it's a big deal, but that it's not more widely known about and, and it, we need to be more aware of it. And that's the big deal of a PFAS. <laughs> That to me is people need to be aware. Um, I am very disappointed uh, that the EPA has not done more about this because, like I said, they started finding that it was in human bloodstream 60 years ago, 40, 50 years ago, something like that. So, so it's not like this is something new that was found a couple of years ago uh, by scientists at NASA. We've known this is there. And why we are continue to allow these chemicals troubles me um, be, because I, I don't know why we would want to put something that's that potentially dangerous into our bodies and into our water supply uh, so I, I'm I'm a little I mean I'm very interested to see where this goes for me in terms of research. Are there any frying pans that don't use it, or is it pretty much like 
universally a a chemical that's used in I'm just curious um, I can't say with certainty I can't answer that question with certainty but it is my impression and understanding that all the Teflon-y non-stick pans except the ceramics usually contain some PFAS got it huh interesting that's super interesting I mean your whole your whole class was I, I just uh, kind of horrifying. I thought of Chud, you know, like uh, those some horror movies with the chemicals and things like that. So, um, but also super, super informative. And thank you so much for helping us out today. And and for the and for the fact that we have a an academy uh, scoop, not an exclusive because you're going to be doing this class again, but that you premiered it uh, with us. So we thank you very much. And it uh, it was something that generated a lot of interest from. The academy community so thank you oh thank you for having me and and it was interesting um it, you know i think uh some of the questions that i got asked were very good questions that i wished i had had better answers for but that's what research is for i'll, I'll keep Absolutely. going forward with that and see what i come up with um may, maybe uh maybe in six months or a year you'll want me to come back and go pfas here's what the big deal really is um, when I find out more about it or was, or was case, the EPA, you know, hopefully, but I'm just, you know, <laughs> being an optimist, uh, Patrick, does this class now make you want to, uh, cook exclusively on hibachi or a pizza oven or something else? Or what's the, uh, what's your take on the topic in particular and the class in general? When we're done, uh, I'm going into the kitchen and I'm prepping my cast iron skillet for reseasoning to get that joker back out and useful. Uh, I mean, it turns out that cast iron skillets are more than for home invaders; they're for cooking, it, it seems. But <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and George, we need to write it down. Six months from now, she's already offered to get us an update on this. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> This is, I mean, the, these are the kinds of, of things that will impact the insurance industry in specific in, with our audience uh, for the next generation. I mean, it, this is, this is our people's uh, asbestos. This is, this yes. is, this is the thing that is going to be uh, long tail suits, long tail type liability issues for a long, uh, long time. Uh, and you, you talk about the, um, the uh firefighting foam i mean that that in itself is going to be is going to be a real issue uh for for who knows how long um and you know we we could try and dive into is it covered is it not covered maybe depending on the policy and depending on the court that it goes to uh and depending on how long it, it takes to get somebody who decides to settle whatever but this is this is a real issue, and the only upside that I saw uh, with the presentation, Brenda, was that uh, that like when they went from leaded gas to unleaded gas, the the lead content in people's blood started to go down. Once they started to notice this, it's gone. It's going down, but it still is in existence. It, we've all likely got some exposure. Mm -hmm. Ninety-seven percent of us of uh, blood samples. Uh, have some PFAS in them. And, um, you know, I think what really kind of, a lot of it scared me, but, you know, the fact that it passes from mother to, to baby in breast milk, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, and I'm sure it, it probably passes to the baby in utero. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it just, they haven't had a, the, I don't know why they haven't studied this more and maybe they're studying it and we will know more later. Uh, but it, it kind of seems like a lot of people related to this chem set of chemicals really wants to bury their head in the sand and just, Oh, well, you know, but, but look, it's waterproof. So it must be okay. Um, I, I just, Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, it's and it's not the first time that something like this, you know, every so often the pharmaceutical industry will put something out that's very toxic and very dangerous to people. And, you know, it almost always comes out that they knew about it, but 
you know, oh, the benefits outweigh the risks. Tell that to the people that got hurt by it. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and so that's kind of how I feel about this is, is we really need to be paying attention to this. I, I'm glad that the White House is paying attention to it. But, you know, part of that five billion dollars that's been allocated, I, I was reading up on is going to go to replace lead pipes in our country because there are still people in this country that have lead pipes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, these issues that we see, I mean, this there's a long, long uh, tail on a lot of these kinds of issues that we have there. Um, <clears throat> having recently done some uh, remodeling work, I can tell you we got rid of the lead pipes that were heading to our septic tank. But that's another story altogether. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you got rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, Things get built and uh, buildings get built and uh, these these chemicals are used all throughout all different kinds of areas of our life. I mean, it shocked me when you said uh, not just the cosmetics, which I was aware of, but uh, food containers. You know, we, we like to think that our food supply is safe, but then again, the food itself might be all right, but what you're putting it in may not be. I mean- right. For for when I grew up, Big Macs came in a styrofoam container. I remember, Brenda. Do you think um, so? I think at one point you said that you teach or you show the movie a civil action in your classes. I have done that before, and I actually went and looked to see if that was PFAS in there, but it was something chlorohydride or. It was a different chemical family, but it was fundamentally the same idea, a tannery dumping chemicals into the water and into the ground. Uh, and it just so happened that that tannery had been sold to Beatrice, a major conglomerate that had deep pockets. Um, it, you know, uh, I mean, the civil action movie, I, I, I'm looking at it, it's right over there on my office shelf. Uh, I, I, if I ever, you know, need something to run out of material, that's a great movie to show. Um, just the opening part explains that, you know, things like, uh, I forget what percentage now, but it's a huge percentage of lawsuits that never see a courtroom. Right. And, sure. you know, mo most people think, okay, you know, you got a lawsuit, you're going to get in front of a judge and you're going to get in front of a jury. You're not. I mean, most of these things settle before they reach a, a courtroom, and then the rest of them settle before they reach the jury. If you see a jury deliberating on one of these things, it's pretty severe. Um, you know, I mean, we just saw a net, I mean, unrelated to toxicity, uh, we, we just saw a major network have to pay, uh, you know, $700, $800 million dollars. Um, in a, in a settlement, they didn't even want it to go to court. They just, okay, you got us here some money. Um, and, and I think that will be the case with these. Uh, I don't think it's going to be defensible, um, at all. Right. Well, I, I, I never thought that this would be a cheery topic, but, uh, automotive automobile diminished value, um, that's another topic that isn't in your bio, I think, but is an, something you're an expert in. Um, and that's a um, that's weirdly an up note from this week's class. And we have you next week teaching that. So could you wow. tell us, besides the the meaning of the term, could you tell us about that next week's class and how, how automobile diminished value is affected by insurance or how it affects insurance or you could- Well, dim diminished- and, and sometimes it's called diminution in value, diminution. Um, it, especially in the contracts. Um, it's okay. often called diminution in value. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, but basically, it, it's the idea that a wrecked vehicle, a wrecked and repaired vehicle is worth less than a non-wrecked vehicle. So if I bring you two 2020 Corvettes, 
uh, same color, same features, everything, and one of them has been wrecked and one of them hasn't, the one that's been wrecked is going to be worth less. Uh, in part because you don't know, and it's very hard to tell if the repairs were done correctly. Um, okay. And we, we all have heard the horror stories about mechanic shops and body repair that is done in terms of shoddy workmanship. Right. Um, so that's part of it. It's a stigma thing too. It's, oh, well, my car's never been wrecked. Well, mine has. Uh, you, you just, that that's kind of part of it too. Um, the, the question is, should insurance pay for those losses? Um, do we really suffer a loss if we hold on to the vehicle for 10 more years? Um, you know, I, I've I've uh, I've had a, a, a diminished value claim a couple of times on two different vehicles. Um, the the first time, you know, as as I've told you guys off camera, uh, the company and I won't name it, you know, said we're not paying you anything. Prove it. Prove it. So I proved it. Uh, I got an expert, I got, which is effectively a public adjuster, which I know in our, our business is not a well-loved concept, but I had to get one to prove that the, that the vehicle was worth less because I had a $20,000 vehicle and it had $9,000 worth of repairs. You cannot tell me that that truck was worth 20 when they were done with it. Um, right. And then I had a, I got rear-ended on a, a, on a different vehicle. And that company was much easier uh, to deal with. So, um, you know, most of the time insurance doesn't pay on first party claims, but they do pay on third party claims. But you have to ask. And, uh, you know, I've got a friend right now, as I told you guys, that has a very expensive Tesla, a six figure car and somebody hit her and it's probably and, and it's just mostly cosmetic damage, but it's probably going to be twenty, thirty thousand dollars in repair bills. That Tesla is not going to hold value the way it would if it hadn't been wrecked. So the, her insurance company came and offered her a whole one percent in diminished value, and uh, you know I, I told her I said that we can do better than that. Um, we, we can do a lot better than that. Uh, I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I really do know. I know two guys who do that uh, as part of their um, practice is that they, they do diminished value valuations uh, and they get in and mix it up with the claims adjusters. And uh, it's usually money well spent. Um, it, it, sure. it is. Uh, it's part of the loss. Now, some people say, hey, you don't you shouldn't get that unless you actually sell the vehicle and you can. But in any case, you know, that's easy to say when it's not your vehicle. When it's my vehicle, I want to be paid um, as do, does everybody else. Absolutely. Well, uh, people that watch this after show, Brenda, just be ready because you may get asked in theory uh, if the Millennium Falcon uh, was parked and was hit by a carbonite truck, uh, <laughs> and then Han Solo filed a claim. What would happen? So you know, just just be ready. All right, I'll be ready for it. All right, I'm cool. one, wonderful, wonderful. Well, uh, Brenda, thank you again. You're always an amazing wealth of knowledge and, and uh, anecdotes and insight. We really always appreciate you uh, helping us out, and we're looking forward to next week already. So thank you for, again. Thanks, Patrick, for dropping by the after show. It's I know we yeah. have to pry you away to get you here but i <laughs> thanks for making time to be here appreciate i was uh, i was just catching up on my star wars before we showed up today so well thank you well, thank you for having me it's always an honor to be with uh insurance journals uh, academy of insurance and thanks. i will be very busy prepping the diminished value class for next week fantastic we're already we're ready. So on behalf on behalf of uh, Brenda Wells, our instructor, and Patrick Rate, the director of the Academy of Insurance, this is George, your host, saying thanks, everyone, for coming to the after show, and we'll see you next week. Take care of yourselves. Take extra great care of yourselves if yes. you're using frying pans, uh, please, and uh, have a wonderful day and a wonderful week, and we'll see you soon. Take care, everybody.
Thanks. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks.